Hey, what's up guys? This is 3D Bonfire back with a really short tutorial. So for my latest project, I just needed to do some research for spline dynamics. And I think I just want to share my knowledge with you. So why don't we just create a spline from A to B? And of course you could go the manual way to just create a spline, just click it and click it and you're there. But I think a better way would be to just create a helix spline just change the start and the end radius to zero and you also have a beautiful spline. Now you have additional options to increase the height of it. So I just make it five meters and I think a subdivision of 50 would be perfect for this one. So you can see we get a beautiful spline with a helix. So now I want to apply spline dynamics to it, but I think I just want to pin it to one and two points in the space, okay? So why don't we just grab a null for it and call this one start, okay? That's perfect. And I think I just want to see this one better. So let's turn it into stars and a good color that works for me for a starting position would be green. Very nice. Let's just duplicate it, call it end and put it to, I think this just should be minus 500. So this is very precise. Let's go into the color and let's say this one will be like a red tint. Perfect. Now it is time to go to the hair tags, spline dynamics and just apply it. You already can see and the spline is just falling into infinity. It's a nice effect, but not exactly what we want. Okay. So I think we also need some constraints. We don't need one, but we need two of them. And with the first one, we just select the starting point here and pin it to our starting null. Set it and you have a hanging rope basically. But a pretty ugly one. This is because you should change the interpolation to something like this spline. That always works for me and this is super smooth and looks pretty nice. Okay, why don't we just do the same here. Select the end point, go to your end constraint, put end into the object tab and click set and you're basically there. So this is looking pretty nice. Perfect. Now I just think we want to make this a little bit more interesting. So go apply some vibrate tags, select both of them. And I think I just want to vibrate in the Y axis, put this 250. Let's see, we got some shaking spline here, some beautiful rope. I think to make it into a rope, we just need to give it some profile. I think 1.5 would be a good radius there. And I think we just select both of them and put them into a sweep. And this is the way to achieve some geometry for your spline. Perfect. I think this one deserves the name rope. Perfect. And let me just check it once more. Okay, so far so good. I like it. I think I just want to change the seat here so it is not mirrored, but it is uh, a little bit more turbulent. So far so good. Let me just show you one more principle here. So how about we just go and apply some capsule, put it in the middle of it. So I think this is my axis, put it to minus, put it to minus 250. And let me just quickly check my lines. The height should be higher radius should be less, give me more subdivisions, give me more segments in the height. I think that's good. Go back there and I just want to offset it, uh, offset it a little bit so it is not intersecting. But now we just apply a vibrate to it. Maybe we just want to have rotation here. Put this one to 500 and 0 0.6. This is just arbitrary. Let's see. Okay, this is working, but <laughs> okay, but it is not working. So we want to have collisions here, but there is nothing happening. So let's go to the hair tags and let's apply our beautiful hair collider here. Let's check this once more. Okay, so far so good, but you can see the rope is going through the through the capsule at some point. So I think there is not enough precision. And therefore I just think we should go, let's see, go back into our helix and go into the advanced tab. And let's see what is happening if we increase the steps to 10. 
I think already this is looking better. So the cable or the rope won't penetrate any longer through our capsule. That's good. If you still need more precision, go up with the steps and the iteration. But I think this is working in our scene. Let's just go back to the capsule. I just want to see it with a, another seat how it is working. All right, so I could see that the cable is going through it. So let me see if I just increase the steps there, it, if it is more precise. Okay, so this is better, definitely. One more thing you can see, there are some intersections and this is just because the hair collider is just colliding with the hair, but not with our geometry. So an easy fix here would be to just duplicate the capsule. This one, the invisible one will be for our calculations, for our collisions, and the other one will be for our eye. <laughs> for the rendering. So put this one maybe to 6.8. I think 7 is good. Just a little bit penetration looks always more believable. So this is working. This is working beautifully. So one last step. I always like to go to my objects, the capsule and the rope, right click on it and let's say bake as a lambic. Just wait for 10 seconds. All right, so just deactivate all of your previous elements there and let's just check the Alembic, how it is working. And you can see the simulation is very stable. Of course, it is super hectic and not the most beautiful simulation I ever made. But you can see the, the simulation won't break and this is just a stable solution for ropes in <laughs> Cinema 4D. So just play with it and maybe one last thing so there could be a problem where your null objects will be offset from the rope i think an easy fix would be just to select the capsule and the rope and let's just select an offset from minus one and now this will always be on the same frame and you have a perfect simulation here so let's just say this is enough for part one and i will make another part where we make the setup just a little bit more complex so, all right, guys, I hope you had some fun with part one on YouTube. I will continue this training series with Spline Dynamics on my Patreon. But for you guys on YouTube, thank you so much for listening. Maybe you want to give me a thumbs up or a comment. And maybe you also want to subscribe to my channel because, hey, you don't want to be the guy that misses all my good training, right? And this is the place to be. If you want to support me, I would be more than thankful because teaching this stuff is just my dream and if you support me man i could spend even more hours into it and maybe do it full time that would be unbelievable so check this place out i have lots of good content over there thank you so much for listening see you next time bye guys